Hey guys, Jacob Potato here. Um, this video turned out to be a wee bit longer than I thought it would, so I split it into two parts. And even more annoyingly, the videos I had lined up for it turned out to be a wee bit shorter at the end. So I had to stick my little logo at the end there, so I apologize about that. I don't want to hold you back any longer. Enjoy the videos, guys, and I will see you all again on Thursday for part two. What is the crack everybody my name is Jacob Potato and this commentary is half scripted half improv so if anything kind of goes weird or something to get there or off topic please forgive me. This is a topic I have wanted to do for quite a while now so just going to get straight into it and tonight's topic is why, why I think Call of Duty is probably one of the worst games, games ever and has ruined gaming, gaming for me and, and possibly, possibly others. others. Hopefully there's some cool echo effect on that so bear with that little part <laughs> so yeah as of lately I've kind of announced my hatred or dislike of Call of Duty and can I just say before I get into this is that even though I hate Call of Duty I actually don't think it is a bad game it is possible to be like that yes for what it does and what it tries to do and its aims and goals and whatnot Call of Duty is actually a pretty good game the controls are tight, the maps for what they're worth are pretty good, and the multiplayer experience is quite second to none, I'm not going to lie. But honestly, I've actually grown to really dislike this game, and there's a couple of reasons why, and I'm going to get straight onto them now. And the first one, really, is how it has not changed since Call of Duty 4. For people who play the game quite regularly, and buy the game every year when it comes out, you may say, but Jacket, that's a good thing. Yes, it is quite a good thing for Call of Duty. The fact that they're able to keep their game so consistent for so long is really good. But that's a problem for me. The game has become so repetitive and so stagnant that I just find it boring now, so I don't want to really, unless it's zombies, have much else to do with it, because I don't play zombies as much as I have the multiplayer. The fact that the multiplayer has not really changed since Call of Duty 4 shows how little the developers kind of put into the game. The game is rushed out on a year basis. Yes, they have two years to work on it, but when you really look at it, the same engine's been used. A lot of the maps are reskins of old maps. As you can see now in the most recent map packs for Call of Duty Black Ops 2, a lot of the old maps are coming back. A lot of people like that, so that's not really a bad thing, because some of the maps they're bringing back are some of the best maps that have ever been in Call of Duty. Summit and Firing Range are two of my most favourite maps from Black Ops. But when you look back at Call of Duty 4, and really think about it. Since Call of Duty 4 up to Black Ops 2, nothing has changed. Yes, people may argue that Black Ops 2 has the new Pick 10 system, but that's still your basic creator class. There's nothing new or innovative about that, regardless of what people think. Call of Duty 4 done great things for the first person shooter. It introduced the perk system, it introduced score or kill streaks, sorry, not score streaks. And it introduced a lot of what most first person shooting games now take into consideration when making a game. Tight gameplay, awesome maps, great guns. So everyone really enjoys that game. World at War was okay. It tried to be different with the time period, so that was okay. A lot of people didn't enjoy it because of a lot of the overpowered classes, but you're going to get that in any game that you play, so I'm not going to take that in consideration. For me, the one that actually tried to do something different was Black Ops, the original Black Ops. That game tried to change things up a bit, tried to add new things into the mix, but at the same time keep them familiar. They added in guns with recoil. I don't care what anybody says, a sniper rifle is not meant to be a laser. It's meant to have sway and it's meant to have recoil. All the guns had recoil. The score streaks or the kill streaks, sorry, don't stack. That was brilliant. The maps were great. Some of the best maps that you'll find in the game. And I actually felt compelled to actually work as a team. Domination really was one of the most preferred game types on that. And so for me, that's where a lot of the team-based games and me getting into a bit of competitive gaming actually came into play for me. But the fact that Call of Duty is able to release a new game each year that really isn't that different. Call of Duty Ghosts will be the same, I guarantee you now. 
bar the dog. They're able to release a new game every year that's not that different for a full price. In a way, it's great, you know, because it's very good marketing or very good whatever, something anyway. But at the same time, it's really having a negative effect on all the things. Which brings me quite well into my second point, is how publishers now believe that their games should be making the same amount of money as Call of Duty. That is not a good thing. When publishers think that their games should be making more money or the same amount of money as a game that's bought by hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. That's a problem. The most recent and best example of this is the latest adaptation of the Tomb Raider series, which sold over 1 million copies in its first 48 hours of a release. Like, that is crazy. Yes, Call of Duty sells that in the first day, but that is great numbers, no matter what way you look at it. And Square Enix was not happy with that. Even though it's actually their most successful launch ever, they are not happy with the seals. And they're actually maybe considering not publishing any more Tomb Raider games because of this. That is an issue. If publishers start to think that because their games aren't selling as well as Call of Duty, then they're maybe going to start following Squaresoft, or Square Enix, sorry, and not release them because they don't see them doing as well. And that's a serious problem.